this is Rachel. And this is Bob Anderson from Anglers Habitat. We are here to present the last fishing report for 2011. So, <laughs> let's talk about steelhead fishing. Bob, what can you tell us about steelhead <laughs> fishing? <laughs> Thanks for that lead-in. <laughs> uh, I called Poppy up at Red Shed Fly Fishing. He is the man when it comes to steelhead. And uh, basically, he told me right now, the fish are in the river. They're up there. It's just, it is so cold. There's not many people out fishing for them. Uh, so, hey, if you're brave, you're willing to put on some layers, head on up there. There are fish in the river. Would you do that? Would you fish in the cold <laughs> like that? Remember, I just moved up here five <laughs> months ago from Arizona. I'm still a wimp. But, Man, yeah, if, I, if you guarantee me I'd catch fish, yeah, I would head up there, definitely. Just be careful. One thing, especially up there, is if you do go up there, please, please, please be careful and bring some extra clothing. Uh, because it's not a question of if you fall in, it's just more of a question of when you fall in. And now with the air temperatures the way they are, when you fall in, you need to get some dry clothing on right away. So be careful up there. Yeah, we'd like to have you back so you can fish another day. That'd be kind of uh, nice. Yeah, it's all about return business. <laughs> okay, so and um, right now on the Salmon River in Stanley, it's just probably about the same thing. It's too cold. Your best time um, to fish Stanley River, or the river up in Stanley, Salmon River in Stanley, <laughs> is probably the end of March and April. That's when our spring steelhead run is. Um, and if you're gonna book any places up there or anything like that, you need to start doing that now or think about it now at least because it gets packed and there will be no place to lodge unless you have your own lodging. Um, and I guess that's basically it for the steelhead. It's the same old, same old pretty much every year. Um, so what can you tell me about the Owyhee, Bob? The Owyhee, the Owyhee today is flowing at 51 CFS. Uh, it has been, Owyhee is one of those rivers that Maybe other than the spring runoff, there's probably not a bad time to fish the Oahe. Uh I've had some friends who were there fishing just the other day. A uh, gentleman landed seven fish uh, in about a little over an hour and a half. He said there were some blue wing olives coming off, small blue wing olives there, again, small. <laughs> uh, also midges, any day basically, any day that you don't have a lot of wind, uh, that's a nice warm day, just, what was it, Monday this week, 44 degrees, beautiful, I should have been over there. Uh, but any day that there's no wind and you got some warm weather, you're going to have midges coming off and you're going to have big fish up on the surface. He caught some on the surface. Uh, also, he, most of them though, he did catch nymphin uh, using a large fly to get it down and then just a small little like pheasant tail trailing behind it. The big thing now is deep and slow. The fish with the water temperature or the air temperature too is going to be, are going to be very lethargic. So make it easy for them. <laughs> I think it's probably going to be about the same thing on the South Fork of the Boise. The river flows right now are 308. So uh, again, um, midges and nymphs, and uh, if you want to brave the cold, bring an extra change of clothes. Um, Bob was telling me earlier that uh, the water temperature in dams like the Oahe and the South Fork of the Boise pretty much stays the same. It's not so much when you go under that it's so bad, but it's when you come up and you hit the air, you get pretty dang cold. And safety is number one. You want to make sure that um, you have your flotation device as well, just in case, even though the flows are really slow. Once hypothermia sets in, then you're in trouble. So uh, we can't encourage you enough to be safe when you're out there fishing. Absolutely. Have a good time when you're fishing. Uh, report back to us. We'd love to have your reports. And uh, is there any other body of water that you'd have a report Well, one thing on? I want to add to that, and that's <laughs> my wife is always saying, what can I get you for Christmas? And I'm finally getting the thing I've been saying for years I'm going to get. Maybe because I'm getting old, I don't know. A waiting staff. Mm -hmm. I mean, this time of year, especially with the cold water, I usually, when I'm fishing, the problem is the last six years I've been fishing, I have a big DSLR camera on my chest. Luckily, I've never taken a fall with a camera in the water, but I've had some close time, so now it's like Christmas gift. I told my wife, okay, get me a good waiting staff. So uh, as far as other rivers are concerned, I talked to Zach over at uh, Lost River Outfitters, and uh, same story over there, the, uh, the Wood River, uh, Silver Creek. Wood River, same thing. It's going to be some midges, midday, warmest part of the day. Other than that, it's going to be nymphing. It's gonna, you're going to hear this again and again. For the next month or two, it's going to be the same thing, midgen and nymphs. Uh, Silver Creek, he said same thing, it's just going to be small, small flies, 
careful presentation. I mean, presentation is a critical thing there. And he said also some streamers. Hey, they've had some reports of some people doing some pretty good work on streamers. Uh, matter of fact, downtown Boise, uh, just this last week, I had a friend who uh, got a five-pound rainbow trout on a streamer in downtown Boise. So, And it was, uh, you know, first thing I looked at the picture, and I was like, dude, it's a steelhead. He goes, no, 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 it's not a steelhead. Sure enough, we zoomed in, and there's the adipose fin, perfect right there. So he was correct. It was a five-pound rainbow, beautiful rainbow. Well, there are some monsters in that river. You just have to be able to find the holes. Um, there's some monster browns in that river, too. Absolutely. So you just have to know where to fish. And um, I just have a feeling that that rainbow was sick and tired of the steelhead getting all the takes. So he decided <laughs> that he was going to jump in there and get his take. So... Uh, I guess with that, we are pretty much done with the fishing report. I hope you guys have a happy new year and a wonderful Christmas. Uh, again, this is the last week of 2011. And on and that note, one thing is don't forget, this January 13th and 14th, Western Idaho. Boise Valley Fly Fishermen have the Western Idaho Fly Fishing Expo. It's Friday and Saturday. And um, I am not oh, sure of the times, but I know Friday it's in the evening till late evening, and then Saturday they're done by 4. And then they have their banquet Saturday at 6. If you are wanting to join the banquet, you can purchase the tickets online. Um, Boise Valley Fly Fishing, just look them up and you can get it online on their website. Um, I know it's $30 per person. There's a lot of packages on there too that you could purchase with raffle tickets and so on membership. And um, there's going to be a lot of guest speakers and they're going to have a lot of fun at this expo. It's even bigger than last year. And there's really good food and just a lot of fun with friends and you just learn new things every single time you go to something like that. And we'll be there so come see us. We, um, we will have the Angler's Habitat booth. So I'm glad Bob brought that up, by yeah. the way. For those of us who are addicted to fly fishing, <laughs> like we are, I mean, it's, you know what, you can tie flies this time of year. It's tough to get motivated to get out there on those cold days. I mean, especially when you have to drive an hour or so to the river and then you get there and the wind is blowing. Uh, so this is your chance to get out there with some friends and really see some new products, try some new stuff, and check out yeah, what's There's going to be a lot of new stuff there. And then if you're not aware of the the stores or what's available out there to you in this area it's a good thing to go to it's it's um, it's a lot of fun and you'll learn a lot of stuff like I said previous to that um, we have some new guest speakers this year too so you might want to um, look up on the website and see who they are a bunch of great guys coming in they'll be casting lessons there there's going to be uh, Women Fly Fishers of Idaho are doing a fashion show and they're oh. teaching how to tie knots and they're telling, teaching bug anatomy. It's so a even, naughty fashion show? Even if your wife, yes Bob, <laughs> it's a naughty fashion show. Okay, just checking. <laughs> even if your wife um, wants to learn, um, it's, it's a good thing to bring her there because the women are holding a program and it, it probably would encourage her more to be able to participate with us ladies and learn some stuff. So. Absolutely. Just think of all the more fishing you can do if you can get your wife involved in it. Because then you can spend money, you can justify, honey, we're doing a trip together. We're going to the Bahamas or someplace like that. I mean, it's like. And if not, just pray to God when you pass that she doesn't sell your equipment for as much as you told her you bought it for. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, to end our fishing report, you can reach us at www.anglershabitat.com or you can call us at 208-454-8188. You can also live chat us off of our website. Hope to see you next year. Thank you. Take care and Merry Christmas.